Hello, everybody. I am Trenton Ty, and I am here at Purgatory Ironworks with a awesome project for you today. So getting started in blacksmithing, you really need two things. You're going to need patience, and the fact is you're going to need a little bit of cash. And if you start making things that you can sell, well, at least one of those will take care of themselves. So we are starting today with the tent stake. Now, if you are working around reenactments or you're doing a lot of places that have a lot of tents, these guys will sell like hotcakes. I usually sell mine for $4 a piece. They are made out of half-inch stock. This particular one is the 12-inch model. Uh, these not only are great for selling, they're also great for practice. These will really allow you your first steps into understanding how to do work consistently, precisely, and expeditiously. You can make a lot of these in a short amount of time. In fact, you'll wear your arm out real quick, but they will teach you how to be good at smithing. So the basic stock that we're using today is going to be half inch square, hot rolled, mild steel, 14 inches long. Again, that makes a 12 inch model because we have a two inch crook on the top. Uh, you can make these in a couple different sizes. If you step up to anything that's around 16 inches, you actually need to step up to a five eighths or even a three quarter inch stock because as these things get longer, when somebody's trying to pull them out of the ground, they will bend. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of force that are exerted on these guys. So if you'll up that stock, that will keep you from having unhappy customers. Really and simply, it's going to take two heats to do this. Real quick, real easy. Uh, you will get a lot of practice doing this stuff. So I've got my piece in the fire, and we're going to make a short, nice, clean taper on the end as our first part. So let's get to it. Notice I'm raising my bar just a little bit to match the angle of my point. This doesn't need to be super sharp. You're not stabbing vampires or anything. You're just stabbing dirt. So make a short taper. And there you go. That simple. Make sure that extra is a little straight and it's that easy. Uh, again, this is something that is great practice if you repeat it over and over again like you should. So now we just need to come in here and heat this top piece. So we'll go to work. There are several different ways to make this bend. Um, and again, you, I've made this argument before. There are several ways to do it, but there are objectively better ways to do some things. So at the simplest, you're just going to bend this over the horn or the corner of the anvil, the side of the anvil there, and make your crook. No problem. The only issue with that is that it's rather haphazard. The actual shank itself that you don't want to bend is going to kink up a little bit. You've got to put it back straight. All of these things cost you a bit of time. It is a better method to either use a jig that you've designed for, or you can use the vise very handily here. When you're making a hundred of these, you want to be able to move from station to station with ease. You don't want to have to spend a lot of time freehanding anything. That's the point. You want a consistent, quick, profitable product. So we're going to move over here to our vise, and I'll show you how we're going to make our bend. Measure off two inches, slide this guy in here just like this and lock it in. No problem there. And the cool thing about the vise is that the jaw really fits that crook. Now you can tighten this up a little bit on the anvil if you want to, but most of the time, the actual contour of the jaw is just what you want for your tent stake, so no problem at all. So now I'll flatten that out because uh, neatness counts, and we'll take a look. All right, and there is our tent stake. Now, I don't recommend that you hit these with linseed oil. If you've got canola oil in your quench tank, I just usually oil these. Again, these are going to see rough service. They don't need to be painted or done up anyway. These are using items. And again, as long as it looks good when it gets to the customer, uh, nobody's worried about super corrosion resistance when you are camping. So again, there we go. Quick, simple, and easy. Even though this is probably one of our shorter demonstrations of an item, I cannot stress to you how important this video can be to you. 
making this item over and over again, this will give you blacksmithing skill. It's the 100 tent stake challenge. If you are truly concerned about getting to be a better blacksmith and you want to have volume to sell, make 100 tent stakes. And you only start counting when you get into a tent stake like this. The 20 pieces of hammered poo-poo you made previous do not count. When you can do enough work to become competent with your hammer, consistent with your results, that's when you're making good progress. So once you get these things put together, again, I usually sell these for $4 a piece. I usually bundle them in four. So $16 for a bundle of four. Uh, that seems to be a good number because bigger tents will have different multiples and you just figure from there. Uh, working on something like this is a basic skill just it is the whetstone for your ability uh, i have a lot of people that look at me and laugh and make a hundred of them ha, 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 ha. why would i ever do such a thing well you would do it if you wanted to get better the only way that you get better is by making stuff becoming familiar with the work it's not every time that you make one tent stake you go to something more complicated it's doing this one over and over again until you get it right and you can do it consistently i've had so many people i've made s hooks in my time when i've done my demonstrations it's arguable that the s hook has made me more money because it's a demonstration in my lifetime than anything else i've ever made and as a result i've made thousands of them so i can do an s hook in my sleep and when somebody new tries it, they're like, man, you make it look so easy. That's because I have done thousands. I have screwed up more than you've ever tried. If you want to be a better blacksmith, you're going to have to practice. Don't worry about doing something different. Everybody wants something different every time they turn the page. That's not how you get good at a craft. You get good by doing one thing over and over again. So until you have done a hundred of these, shut your mouth. You haven't practiced enough. Hope this video helps. You guys be good. <laughs>